move on to this session. And please let me introduce you to Dr. Mawalu Mohammed. And he was born in Bukuyum, the father state in Nigeria on May 16th, uh, 1978. After his secondary education, he attended School of Nursing uh, as one of the Bukuyum University teaching uh, hospitals in Kota between the years 2000 to 2003. Uh, as a registered nurse, Hawalu worked at uh, General Hospital Moriki, the Fara State, for two years before enrolling for a degree in nursing. He completed his Bachelor of Nursing Sciences degree in March 2011 at Hawalu University in Zaria, in Nigeria. Additionally, additionally uh, he holds part of his degree professional examination in the same institution. After working for about two years in, in the maternity unit uh, of the early person work, he graduated to the School of Nursing as a nurse teacher. Presently, he is a lecturer at uh, Osman Rodolfi University, Sporto, and Hawalu has uh, completed his Master of Science in Maternal and Child Health and Nursing at the uh, University of Ghana, Lebanon, uh, in uh, 2014. And PhD in maternal and newborn nursing at the University of Chicago. All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, help um, Dr. Mohammed with his slides. So um, Dr. Mohammed is saying that most women in Nigeria give birth at home. And Prof says, especially in the north, and it is uh, the preferred option um, in developing countries, as he said it. However, unplanned home birth attended by traditional attendants has been shown to increase maternal and newborn complications. Planned home birth. Dr. Mohammed, we really can't hear you. It's really breaking up. Planned home birth increases access to midwives by 56% and it prevents a lot of complications, such as maternal mortality and decreased deaths. All right, so to continue the introduction here, are the things that improve planned home birth, informed choice and shared decision making, respect of culture and preference, improve safety of home births and improve quality of home births. But they need midwife positive, and I think that's a great point. Here is the problem uh, statement. Unplanned home births are very prevalent but they may result in complications and deaths. All right, sorry, just had to let Dr. Mohammed know that um, his sound is, is very choppy. I'm sorry, uh, Dr. Mohammed. So we do need to um, look at planned home birth interventions, and I'm glad to see that you utilised uh, one of my colleagues' uh, research here, um, Dr. Janelle Komorowski. Um, but this rarely focuses on the midwife's attitude to promote choice of birth. So objectives are to determine the effect of planned home birth educational intervention on midwife's attitudes towards planned home birth practice in Nigeria. Here's the methodology. We looked at the design. The, it was a randomised controlled trial. The study location was Sokoto, Nigeria. The population was midwives. Great. They had a 226 person sample. 
the instrument was a validated questionnaire and they use SPSS uh, to um, achieve the data analysis. And Dr. Mohammed says, we design intervention to educate them on the need for planned home birth. This, sorry, this slide is quite small, but you can see um, the methodology continuing with the description of how uh, the data was organized and how the midwives were uh, placed in two different arms of the study with the intervention and the control study. And this um, video recording will be available with the slides for you to look through. And I'm sure Dr. Mohammed would be happy to put his email in the chat box so that anyone that wants to can follow up. So the intervention was planned home birth, promoting safe home births in the midwifery model of care. The investigator was a nurse midwife and here's the uh, delivery method and um, this. So he says that randomization was there to um, assist, uh, randomization was to achieve a balanced group. Wonderful. Here are the learning objectives. So there was um, sessions on knowledge of planned home birth, including introduction to concept, evolving evidence, the midwife's role, and also demonstrating a positive attitude towards planned home birth. And I think we can all think back to when we've worked with colleagues that are not quite as confident eh, or have as much self-belief in planned home birth as we may. So Karen saying we used to run workshops for couples and Dr. Mohammed says the intervention was to the midwives. So there was a, um, a very good over 200 sample of midwives that were involved in this study. So they had lectures, slides and quizzes um, to develop uh, knowledge and attitudes that were positive towards planned home birth. Dr. Mohammed says the module focused on teaching what constituted an ideal planned home birth practice. Oh, sorry, I skipped a slide. So here's the methodology continued. It uh, talks about um, the post-test, the follow-up and three-month follow-up and the trial flow chart um, was excellent. So um, that is really excellent. Um, as somebody that's a doctoral lecturer, I'm impressed that you didn't have to exclude anyone from the study. So um, it worked on the consort uh, design. So we can all look up consort now and make sure we know what that is. Here's the data analysis uh, that was prepared. There was an independent t-test and a chi-square test uh, with, and then an independent t-test and then there was a linear mixed effect model for the intention to practice planned home birth. And the data collection was at three time points, says Dr. Mohammed. There was no significant differences between the intervention and the control group regarding socio-demographics. So here's the age, qualifications, ranks, healthcare, and the units. And at the baseline, next page, midwives in both groups showed a weak to moderate but positive levels of attitude change towards planned home birth. That's fantastic. The results and discussion, here we are, and this will also be obviously in our recording. And this is just demonstrating that there was a weak to moderate change. So well done, Awalu. That's very impressive research right there. That's a lot of work for you and your team. And here's the results and discussion. And as I said, this will all be recorded. So you'll be able to look at this at your leisure and maybe think about instituting something like this uh, where you live. Here we go. Um, the tests within groups, there was a significant change in the mean attitude within the intervention group, but not in the control group, but there was no difference three month, in three months uh, follow up. So participants in the intervention were more favorable towards planned home birth compared to the control group. Compared to the control group at the immediate post intervention and three months follow up. So between the two groups, the participants in the intervention arm were more favorable towards planned home birth practice compared to the control group. That is really excellent. So well done for that. The summary of the findings were that the midwives in both groups showed a weak to moderate but positive level of attitude towards planned home birth practice at the baseline. Planned home birth education in Sokoto, Nigeria was effective in promoting 
a positive change in the attitude towards planned home birth practice within the intervention group and between the group. And then Awalo says midwives in the planned home birth group were more favourable towards planned home birth towards the control. Yeah, we saw that from your data. That's excellent. In conclusion, Dr. Mohammed would like to say, the findings of the study indicate that planned home birth is effective, sorry, planned home birth education is effective in promoting a positive attitude towards planned home birth practice among midwives in Sokoto, Nigeria. Midwives, midwives, who receive planned home birth education in the form of interactive lectures about evidence and the benefits of planned home birth, the midwifery model of care, and vignettes on the consequences of neglecting women's choice of birthplace demonstrated a more positive attitude towards planned home birth practice compared to the baseline score and against those in the control group. Practicing midwives were offered the opportunity to learn and share their experiences in planned home birth practice. The randomized controlled trial and interventions used in the study may be replicated by other researchers. The findings will inform the health service administrators and policymakers on the strategies to promote attitudinal change and foster cultural acceptance for planned home birth practice. And Dr. Mohammed says, Planned home birth education is effective in promoting a positive change in attitude. And I think that really that really um, brings together when we heard yesterday from the World Health Organization, that's exactly what we heard from them when women's choice are given choices and midwives are educated, then it really makes um, a really big change in families' lives and knowledge sharing and exactly uh, Dr. Mohammed, this um, RCT could be replicated wherever wherever we live uh, across the world. So, um, further research on home birth, planned home birth should include all providers, with all maternity caregivers, and planned home birth education requires an ongoing follow up training to sustain its effect for future planned home birth practice. And exactly, um, without informing policymakers this is not going to change. I, I know we heard a lot in the chat while we were waiting for the microphone test about all the differences all over the world where sometimes home birth could be illegal or it's normal or there's such a wide range of um, attitudes towards uh, women's choices and families' choices and shared decision making. So planned home birth is a collaborative practice and we should incorporate into the continuing education of all midwives. Here are Dr. Mohammed's references. And I don't know if you saw my question. Um, Dr. Mohammed, could you put your email in the chat box now so that I'm sure some of the wonderful listeners would like to um, hear uh, about, about this uh, from you as well. And Prof says, of course, I support Dr. Mohammed's um, conclusion. Yeah, uh, and yes, we've got your references here, but could you include your email? Uh, if people have got more questions for you. Oh, and more references. Excellent. And I know a lot of the people that you're referencing here. So these are some wonderful um, references that you have. Yeah, if you could put your email in the chat, that would be fantastic. And I think Baptiste has a question if uh, he can uh, type in the box. And Dr. Mohammed, thanks you. And thank you so much, Awalu. We're very sorry um, about your sound uh, conditions. And I'm going to hand back to Elisa so she can finish up uh, the questions and then the rest of the slide set. And thank you so much for your patience um, with this Scottish American midwife interpreting uh, your data, Dr. Mohammed. Very grateful praise for you. And I'm sorry about the internet. Thank you, Jane, for the assistance. And thank you, Dr. Walu. And yeah, the questions, Baptiste has a, had a question earlier. Uh, I'm going to pass it in chat again. Uh, 
uh, how do you manage the complication in especially the second stage of labor uh, of labor in on birth and uh, you can use public public chat uh, the Surawalu to to answer Well, I don't know if you can uh, type in the questions. Um, Baptiste says, uh, to be able to practice home birth, it, is it due to civilised setting or other method? I need some clarification for its effectiveness. And Ethel asks about the education. How uh, does it include one, two and three delay? And Karen asks what complications you are talking about. Because so Dr. Awalu replies, uh, planned home birth is part of community community midwifery practice, uh, sometimes called a domiciliary midwifery. And Elisa, did you see the comment from Karen? At 36 weeks, yeah. all women um, have a home assessment. That's fantastic. They look at the home setting. And Dr. Mohammed said to reply to Ethel included measures uh, to minimize uh, the effects of delay. Uh oh, we lost it. Uh, he's back. So, just letting everyone know, we're going to wrap up uh, in a few minutes. And I'm going to, at the moment, thank everyone. And apologies again for the sound. And thank you, Dr. Awalu, for the presentation. And to Jane for the assistance. Thank you very much. And please send your selfies to info at uh, vidm.org uh, for the slideshow at the end. Thank you, everyone.